one of the most important parts of making a model is the finishes that it's going to have when it's all done. One of the things I've learned in making models is that you need to spend as much time as possible now um, to put the highest possible finish on the model, sanding, painting, sanding, painting, until you get it almost perfect, like brand new. And then we do an interesting thing. Then we dirty the model back up. Um, but to do a proper job, um, you need to start with as fine a uh, finish as possible. Um, the idea of dirtying the model is to give it an appearance of age and use, which gives it that unique character that will differentiate your model from many of the others. In other words, it mustn't look too perfect. And the term that is used to describe that is compelling attraction. That's what we're trying to, to do here, to develop and build a compelling attraction that differentiates this from, let us say, a, a plastic perfect model. The best video I've seen to develop these techniques was done by Tom Laurier, and I highly recommend it if you want to take your skill to the next level. One of the interesting problems I'm having is now that I've painted the yellow, where there are spaces between the planks and the ribs, and they have these little tiny holes, they're showing up very dark. I'm speaking to Martin Superville, who is actually going to be the person who's getting this boat, and who is an artist. His suggestion was to use um, full acrylic uh, paint, yellow preferably, and use that to fill the little cracks. I have to say it's doing a marvelous job. Of course, one of the problems you've had when you've done an airbrush finish, which is almost perfect, and then you come with a regular paintbrush, um, no matter how careful you are, you start actually seeing the repair. You see the difference between the paintbrush finish and a new finish and it takes quite a quite a lot of skill and time um, to bring that white base that you've put to help you do the repair to make it disappear and to make the new color exactly the same as the airbrush finish the good news is that you will learn to mix paint and you may actually come up with a slightly different mix that covers up the repair and makes it almost invisible. I've come pretty close to the final colors. Um, this is a standard anti-fouling. Um, it could be a little flatter and maybe a little browner. I'm 100% decided this will be the final color. Um, the yellow certainly has come along, but I'm having some of these spots which I'm having to put some white on and then reapply the yellow. Um, so until I get all these through, and I'm having the same issue on the inside, some repairs I had, I went in very stupidly, followed the advice of somebody wanting to hustle the paint, put a blow dryer on it, to heat up and quicken the paste that was drying, and of course it bubbled the paint. So then I had to sand it off and then I had to apply the white um, paint and now I'm building back up the yellow. Today we're going to make some oars. Um, there are two 10 foot oars and one 13 foot oar. And we've made up some stock and I'll go through the dimensions with you. Um, but basically you need to decide the type of oar and there are tons of examples um, on the internet for you to decide what you're going to build. Um, these are old traditional oars as made in Trinidad and Tobago, nothing fancy. To do this, I have my shearline lathe, uh, which is the easiest way for me to make this. Um, there are two ways you can make the blank. One, you can make it an absolute square and then add on the extra pieces for the blade. Or you can do what I've done is uh, make a rectangular piece which has the width of the blade and simply square the end to put into the lathe 
or you can use an adjustable chuck on the lathe. To square the ends, I simply went on my tabletop saw, worked out the um, thickness, and then simply cut off each side until I got an absolute square on the end. And of course, you need a center point at the end, which we established with a punch. Because I decided to use mahogany, um, which is a relatively soft wood, this is really quite challenging. Um, it would have been much easier to use one of my hardwoods like juniper, because when you press the tailstock um, into the chuck um, with a soft wood, you tend to get some bend, and then there's a constant adjust, adjustment you're making on the tailstock. Here is the first one. Um, we'll clean it up, make sure we're happy with it. Just to show you the second way of building the ore, um, we've made the main stem and added the blades and then we'll shape these afterwards. This is the final look of the 13 foot ore and you can see the layers on the blade. Very often in the middle of a build it starts getting you down and you need to start to see or visualize what the finished product is. So I'm constantly putting pieces on the model um, just as a motivation for me to continue going as I start to see the final finished product. So here we are, the anchors on the boat. All the colors are in, although I'm still touching up. Um, the two oars are in. The outriggers are placed, and these are optional outriggers. And I'm now starting to work on a net which is going to go in the back here. I've been able to get two types of mesh, probably the correct size, one green and one black. Um, neither one is absolutely correct color-wise. The green would have been a darker green, and the black would be a blacky green. At the same shop, we were able to get some glass beads that were the right size and right shape, but the wrong color. So we simply painted them the red color that I wanted. This is kind of what it'll look like. Um, I'm, I'm not sure of the size yet. It'll have to be at least double or triple the size that's in the boat right now. And here are some photographs that show persons being deployed, which will give you a rough idea of, of how the thing works. In our case, um, we're making a fairly small scene, um, simply because from a scale perspective, I'm quite sure I'll have difficulty packing it down. So this one is um, 60 feet long by 24 feet deep. Now we're just threading the floats, um, and hopefully we'll get them to attach in a way that looks realistic. I am stringing the floats on the net similar to how they suggest. They suggested tying a rope to two coconut trees, um, putting the net on, keeping it taut, and then using a line to attach the float line to the net. And the best way to do that is actually to follow how they really did it in real life. Of course, that was almost impossible to do. But with the needle, I was able to um, tie the two together, not perfectly. So I think when I go to do the base, I'm going to change the strategy and run a line through the net first, and then have a second line with the sinkers and attach the two lines together. This was actually quite easy to do with a needle. Um, and I should have really done it at the top in this manner. It just makes the, the whole job so much easier. Once we had that done, we put some diluted PVA on it to make sure that the floats all stayed exactly where they are. Wouldn't want them not to slip. And then folded it and put it on the boat. And um, it really came out looking very stiff, artificial, not real-like. 
to try and soften the, the net up to make it a little less sharp and new we're putting soaking it in soap and believe it or not we're trying some conditioner um, to see if that will soften it up a little bit and uh, make it seem more real it's much better now it's no longer looking nice and crispy uh, has a little bit of worn look to it and folds much better than it did before we have some repairs to do and we have the weights at the bottom to put on we have spent a lot of time touching up finishing up and getting nice clean lines um, refining the color so that um, I'm pretty happy of how it came out and particularly this bottom line cleaning up this bottom line so now we're going to put the fishing number the official registration number and the name on the boat in Port of Spain where I live there are two companies that uh, produce these little vinyl signs um, one machine was down so I was left with the other one I didn't get the exact font that's in on the boat but that's not surprising because there's no font uh, a guy would have just hand painted it on and as is always a problem with scale it's very difficult to paint things at, um, at scale these vinyl stickers are really quite easy to put on um, the main challenge is really just lining them up um, because once they go on you can't readjust and uh, in my case it was lining the top up so that the the lettering would be in the center of plank number six um, as as you can see you have to be very careful when you're taking the top tape off um, that the letters are pressed hard into the, the paint below uh, my suggestion to you is your call is that when the boat is totally complete that you spray the entire the entire boat including the, the lettering with a clear um, finish of some sort very much like artists do with glazing when it's finished to protect the paint and in this case to protect the vinyl lettering because uh, if it comes off um, you literally have to take the entire thing off and that also is going to mean a repair to the paint in the back. We had decided a long time ago how we were going to display the um, display the model on the base. Um, I make up these little tubes, which I'm um, holding in place with a regular hex head bolt, and I find they work great and they're very inexpensive. For the what is effectively the Rolex on this boat. Um, it called for a one inch wooden dowel um, of course I've used some brass pins um, much easier to handle than, than the dowel and um, cover them in in a cover them in rope um, to make it look very realistic in the original boats they actually might use old seine or old nets um, to protect the oars and of course more sophisticated oars um, although you wouldn't find that here with a local fisherman um, actually had a leather shield around the oar to protect it from wearing once the string was all done uh, we took some diluted uh, PVA and, um, and just covered them uh, and that seems to hold it pretty well. I'm also going to paint it afterwards with um, some diluted brown um, acrylic paint um, again to give it that look of age and to make it seem more realistic. Time to bring this to an end, we'll see you in the next video.